Hi, I'm Codex, and one of the reasons why I've always loved playing a Fury Warrior is that regardless of the expansion or playstyle era, there's always been something that would reward you for intelligent decision making. This is why I think that one of the worst changes made to Fury Warriors in the past three expansions was making Rampage cost 80 Rage instead of 75. This single change lowered the skill ceiling of the spec by actively punishing you for attempting to make intelligent decisions. In this video, I'm going to be trying to prove to you why this was such a terrible decision and why this change should be reverted. Broadly speaking, Fury Warriors optimize their damage by doing three things. Maximizing their rage generation, maximizing the number of times they use Rampage, and then maximizing enrage uptime. All three of these activities affect the other, so casting Rampage grants enrage, and enrage gives you haste, which increases your rage generation, and generating more rage means more Rampages, which means more enrage uptime, so on and so forth. Now, rage generation occurs at a roughly constant rate, which by extension means that we're going to be able to rampage at a roughly constant rate as well. So far, so good. Now, rampage provides damage in two different ways. First, there is the damage that it actually does whenever you use it. And second, there is the damage that is gained because of the enrage uptime that it provides. And this is from the extra haste and because of mastery increasing our damage whenever we are enraged. Now, if Rampage was the only thing that could proc and rage, then both components would be roughly consistent and there really wouldn't be an issue. But Bloodthirst has a chance to proc and rage. Because of this, maximizing the value of that second component means that ideally you should not overlap and rage procs. Now, because rage generation occurs at a roughly constant rate, that means unless you rage cap, you will always be able to achieve the same number of Rampages over the course of a fight, regardless of their specific timings. This is important because it means that the optimal thing to do with Rampage is delay using it for as long as you can without rage capping if you're already enraged so that you can maximize your enrage uptime, and doing so will not result in fewer Rampages over the course of the fight. Being able to correctly identify the right times to delay a Rampage by a GCD or two during combat is one of the things that I believe differentiates an average Fury Warrior from a great Fury Warrior. And this is why I think making Rampage cost 80 rage is stupid. It actively punishes you for trying to play intelligently because there are scenarios where even if you're at exactly 80 rage and delayed rampage for one GCD, you can still rage cap yourself. So let's start talking about this more quantitatively and put some numbers behind what I'm talking about. Between rampages, warriors generate rage from main hand swings, which generates 6 rage, offhand swings, which generate 3 rage, raging blow, which generates 12 rage, Bloodthirst, which generates 8 Rage, or Whirlwind, which generates 4 Rage when you're hitting only one target. Now, obviously, at sub 20%, there is Execute as well, but I'm going to be ignoring that for this example just because it keeps things simple. The probability that a given GCD will have a melee swing occur during it is equal to your GCD duration divided by your swing timer. Below 100% haste, haste reduces your swing timer and your GCD at the same rate, meaning that we will have the same result regardless of how much haste we actually have. So we can just take the base GCD of 1.5 seconds and then divide it by 3.6, which is the base attack speed for two-handed weapons. And that will give us 0.4166. And again, what this means is that for a given GCD, there's a 41.66% chance that a particular weapon swing will occur. Now, obviously, we have two weapons and not one, so what we can do is say that each weapon has its own independent 41.6% chance of having a swing during a given GCD. Next, if we're going to delay a Rampage, obviously we want to be using an ability during that GCD, so in order to model the likelihood that the ability that we use is a Bloodthirst, I took the baseline GCD of 1.5 and then divided it by the baseline cooldown of Bloodthirst, which is 4.5 seconds, and that comes out to 0.33 repeating, so on and so forth. Doing the same thing, but for Raging Blow, you get 1.5 divided by 8, but because Raging Blow has a chance to reset its cooldown, as a quick and dirty way of accounting for this, I simply added 0.3, which is the chance to reset the cooldown if you're talented into Cruelty, which results in the probability that a GCD will be a Raging Blow being about 48.75%. For Whirlwind, I just added the chance that the GCD would be a Bloodthirst and the chance that the GCD would be a Raging Blow, and I added those together, and then I subtracted 1 by that number. This is functionally equivalent to saying that if it's not a Raging Blow and it's not a Bloodthirst, then it's a Whirlwind. In this case, it turned out to be 17.9% chance that the GCD would be a Whirlwind. With these probabilities in mind, I went and made a Python script that takes the probability of each melee swing occurring during a given GCD, and the probability of that GCD being a particular ability, and then I had it basically roll the dice to see how much rage would be generated during that GCD. Now, I also had to do this for all potential rage levels that you could be at where you might consider delaying a rampage. So, 
all the rage levels from 80 to 100. I then had the script take how much rage was generated during that GCD and then add it to whatever the starting rage was. And if it was over 100 rage, then it counted it as an overcapped rage event. And then I tracked the frequency of how often that occurred. I had my script roll the dice 100,000 times at each starting rage value. And here's what it found. If you're at 80 rage, there's an 8.69% chance that you're going to overcap your rage if you delay your rampage. Put more bluntly, there's an 8.5% chance that you're going to be punished for making a smart decision. Now, if you're at 84 rage, then the likelihood of you overcapping your rage goes up to 26%. To be fair, I am doing a bit of sloppy math here to approximate the relative frequencies of ability usage. So, how about we put some more realistic numbers on that? With some ability usage data from a SimCraft report that also line up really closely with real-world logs, the ability frequencies are as follows. For Bloodthirst, it's around 39.5%. For Raging Blow, it's around 39.2%. And for Whirlwind, it's around 21.29%. So basically, with the original numbers that I was using, I was over-representing Raging Blow and under-representing Bloodthirst and Whirlwind. So I plug those numbers into my script and then run it again. Now, this brings down the numbers a little bit. At 80 rage, the probability of overcapping your rage is just under 7%, and then at 84, it's around 23.4%, but the problem is still there. The only time you would be able to use a Raging Blow and not overcap yourself is if you're absolutely sure that your melee swings aren't synced up and they're not both going to occur during that GCD. If you're above 83 Rage, then it's the same thing, but now for Bloodthirst as well. And statistically speaking, that's going to occur between 15 and 20% of all of the GCDs that you might consider delaying your Rampage on. Now, I'm a weirdo who already monitors my swing timers as Fury, so I can actually play around this to some extent, but for what gain? If I want to decide if I should delay my Rampage or not, I need to see how soon my next melee swings are, I need to see what abilities are off cooldown, and I need to check my rage to see what I'm currently at so I can run a bunch of heuristics in my brain to try to figure out whether or not it's going to be safe for me to use an ability or not, and a lot of the time the answer is just going to be no. Over the course of a 5 minute fight, in the best case scenario, I might delay 1 or maybe 2 Rampages. So I've done all of that extra work for 2 GCDs worth of time being enraged. And that's assuming that I don't make a mistake with it, which is very possible. In BFA, Rampage had a base cost of 85, but every single Fury Warrior took Carnage, which reduced its cost down to 75 Rage. During that expansion, on a 5 minute fight, there would typically be between 5 and 10 opportunities to delay a Rampage, which could actually make a difference in your DPS compared to another Warrior, if they weren't using this trick. So take a guess at what happens when I set my script to check the probability of Rage capping when you start from 75 Rage, rather than 80. Yeah, that's right. You can't rage cap at all. Assuming you're not using recklessness or execute, there is literally no scenario where you can rage cap yourself if you are between 75 and 80 rage. It can't happen. It's 0%. This means that you can actually make a smart decision and hold that rampage just a little bit to maximize your enraged uptime. And you don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to get your hand slapped for trying to be clever. You get rewarded for being the smarter player, which... As far as I've always known, that's supposed to be how this game works. I honestly don't even care if they have to nerf the damage of Rampage to compensate for it being used more often and the increase in rage uptime and so on and so forth. I just want to be able to differentiate myself through intelligent play rather than being punished for trying to be better. And that's why I think that Blizzard needs to make Rampage cost 75 rage again. Thanks for listening to my TED Talk. As always, tell me why my opinions are dumb in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and subscribe for more.